r slash adulting. Lung Jumping Fox 5728 says. 40 year old bother refuses to work, lives off parents, has son. With the exception of the four years he was married, my bother Charles has never lived away from our parents. He has never held a job to support himself. Our parents are getting old. My dad is 71 and my mom 68. They let him live in his childhood room and play guitar in the basement. He has a band like he was 16. Besides that he doesn't want to work. His 12 year old son, who my bro has on weekends, is still too young to really see what's going on. When I go visit I have to take the lot of them out to eat. I talk to my parents, but they feel there is nothing they can do. It hurts to watch them share their fixed income retirement with him. Buying him music supplies and feeding him. He does run errands for them, and then pockets the change, like a teenager. What can I do to help? And does anyone know what happens to folks like my brother? I have three kids, and can't take him in, when the time comes. An author Ryadeida says. It's your parents, that are enabling him. Have you asked them, why they allow it? Does he have mental health issues? What did he do as a job before? Lung Jumping Fox 5728 says. He has never worked to support himself. That's why his wife left him. He still wears the clothes from 8 years ago, when they were married. He's looking pretty rough though. I mean, he's not young Aish anymore. My little bother lost his youthful side. That's hard to watch. And I don't think he understands how money works, or doesn't work. Parents serve him breakfast, and he messes around in the basement. He goes out with the family, and is included with whatever we do. Can people really live into their 70s this way? Poor guy. Julian Kennedy 23 says. People absolutely do live in their 70s like that, and quite often at least one parent's still alive, and they are still mooching off them. Keep in mind with no employment history he's not going to have any social security for himself. Evil Warang says. It's easier said than done to kick your child out and stop supporting them. We can all post here and say we would until the time came. Hadit with fire people says. I'm getting close with our almost 21 year old. Won't help out. Won't go to college. Barely works, just started another part time job after 7 months of not working. If we kick him out he may be homeless. But I'm not being held hostage with a man child in my house for 20 years. Wife wants to give him another year, which I can live with. I would have no issue with him staying, if he did anything to help or went to school. Effervescent11 says. I don't have much advice for you, because I'm in the same situation. My brother is almost 40, and he has never had a full time job or even a romantic relationship. He has lived off of my parents his entire life. He has money from a lawsuit, but won't touch a penny of it. He gets me, or my parents to buy him things, by saying he'll pay us back, but he never does. He even has a university degree which my parents paid for, but he is resentful that we made him get a university degree for nothing. He refuses to get a job that is related to his degree, even though he picked the degree himself. If you find him a job, he will make one excuse after another about why it's not appropriate for him. He spends all his time gaming and working out in my parents' basement. He is verbally abusive to my parents, and he refuses to help them, even though he lives off them. He's also a giant insel who thinks women who have premarital sex are dirty sluts and wants to marry a virgin. He also thinks he's super attractive, and expects his future spouse to be at his level. Long story short, you can't help these people. I tried for years. I even offered him exclusive use of a waterfront condo in a call area for free, so he would finally move out on his own. All utilities including the internet were paid for. He literally only had to pay for slash make his own food and the grocery store was a 5 minute walk away. The condo even had a full gym, he refused. 
I've since cut him off, and my parents off for other reasons. You can't help those that refuse to help themselves. Your parents are enabling him, and they need to live with the consequences of their failure as parents. You have no responsibility or obligation to any of them. When the time comes, and your brother comes knocking, remember that no is a complete sentence. Good. Help an Irishman says. I even offered him exclusive use of a waterfront condo in a call area for free, so he would finally move out on his own. All utilities including the internet were paid for. He literally only had to pay for slash make his own food and the grocery store was a 5 minute walk away. The condo even had a full gym, he refused. Hey bro, it's me. I've seen the light and changed my ways. What's that address again? In all seriousness, this is absolutely insane. What you offering is a dream score for so many people, and your brother still wants more, despite contributing nothing? Zakit says. Damn. Can I take you up on that condo? Practical and 7330 says. Your nephew has suspicions, but probably isn't comfortable saying anything. I say this as a child of divorce who called out my dad for being a couch surfing mooching bum when I was 10. Your parents are enabling him, and until that stops there's nothing you can do. T4089 says. 55 slash M here. Detach with love. As best as you're able, watch this situation, as if it were a cloud passing in the sky. You're not the main player here. You have your own family to focus on. As for what's going to happen down the road, don't throw scary stories into the future. That's splitting the light. A thousand different things may happen with him, and 99% of those things are going to end up in a ditch before they reach their destination. Maybe, just maybe, he's being kept safe right now, so he can do something special for the family when the time comes, maybe something for you. Then, you'll see how much of the current angst was for nothing. Worry is wasted time, holding no value. And remember, the difference between a weed and a flower is a judgment. Hope this helps. Don with Sergio says. Maybe, just maybe, he's being kept safe right now, so he can do something special for the family when the time comes, maybe something for you. Oh my god this is why he's in the position he's in. He's not special. He's not going to do anything special for the family. Thinking like that is why he never left. This is terrible advice. Long Jumping Fox 5728 says. Worry is wasted time I love this point thank. You. Kakezalau City 1820 says. Tell your parents they need to figure out what they'll be doing for retirement, because you won't be footing the bill, nor taking him in, when the time comes. Be firm and direct. Cautious Ice 884 says. Just commenting and saying kids are not stupid, the 12 year old is definitely way old enough to know what's going on. He's known this for years. He sees this very clearly, that his dad is a bum ass. Without a doubt. He will see his friends, and how their fathers act and wonder why, isn't my dad like that? That shit really affects children. Your brother is not your problem. Your parents coddled and raised him this way. It is not your job, to undo their poor parenting. When the time comes when your parents leave this earth, do not feel guilty or oh my poor brother. No. He is a grown ass man who has made his bed. Let him lay in it. Do not help him. Long Cup 9990 says. This is my brother almost to a T. But besides completely living off them, he's verbally and emotionally abusive to them. I call him out any chance I get, but I haven't seen him since December 2022. He was just in a mental hospital for 6 days and now he's in jail. Refused to work after wife left him. He lost supervised visitation. Lost car BC he was too lazy to put it in his name. It was only in wife's name. He got a restraining order put against him, in his defense it's not right. 
he stepped on her foot once, and she dropped charges then went back for an emergency order, to be able to get sole custody, and move out of the area. I know he lost his son, but he needs to work, and leave my parents alone. I don't know what the answer is here. It's an impossible situation. He's obvious mentally ill too, but he's like a child. He thinks selling handmade candles online is going to be enough to support himself plus child support, which he's never paid by the way. My parents pay it. It's just an impossible situation and I feel for you. At least he's not abusive to them is all I can say. R slash adulting. Sweet Gumibu 120 says. What is the strangest reason someone has broken up with you? Be the light one says. Him and his roommates used to make fun of me because I had goals and dreams. In the end he broke up with me because he said that next to me. He just looked like a loser with no life because I was working towards things I wanted. Sweet Gumibu 120 says. She said I know you couldn't, and that's a problem for me. Azarian Milk says. You have too much kitchen stuff in a too small kitchen. Agreed. I'm saving for a house and the kitchen has less storage than my last place. But his ex-wife was also stalking me, sending death threats, pretended to commit suicide and I broke up with him but yeah. Too much kitchen stuff. Dog 83 says. Small dick. Particular Pangolin 7 says. The person broke with me because I was working 9 to 10 hours per day. It was my situation I couldn't change in that time. But I understand her side also. Stretching Panther says. For the Olympics, if I don't win, rightly or wrongly I'll blame you, and I don't want a hatred toward you forever. Breadfruit 1211 says. That is was too nice, and he felt he couldn't be himself because of that, like he had to walk on his toes. What do you mean I'm too nice? Is there something wrong with just not being mean? And it's not, like I was trying to people please, or secretly thinking mean stuff, or using it as a manipulative tactic or something, I just thought he was a great guy and I love to be nice to him. Ha ha ha. Well. His loss because for more than a year now I have the cutest, kindest, and nicest boyfriend I cold have ever wished for, who tells me every day that he loves the way I act and talk and I know we will last for a long time. 3. Sorry for getting sappy hahaha. <laughs> Refrigerator no 6334 says. I don't have the time to give you that you deserve. We were technically dating. But had really been more FWB as the dates involved me going over to her place, and, frick, I'm her, normally with a dinner first. The details I put together was, that her friend group, all guys, hated the fact she was dating someone outside the group, they had all ignored her as she was overweight, but she lost heaps of weight then met me online and now they clearly decided she was worth dating. She talked about how it annoyed her that now she was hot they paid her a lot more attention than they used to. So they kept pressuring her to do things for them, especially make entire cosplay outfits before events. The reason I felt it strange was that I probably would have been happy just meeting up once a month until she finished her PhD. PLRGN says. I was 14 when my boyfriend said you are too happy for me and that was his reason for breaking up with me. Later I understood he kind of was right. He had a severe depression. His dad had died some time before we met, and I was like most kids that age are, not traumatized by existential crisis from loss and grief, and had like no tools to support him in a way he needed during that huge crisis. When my dad died 20 years later I felt so bad for that 14 year old boy whom I had no emotional capacity slash emotional intelligence to help by that time. When my dad died, I could see friends my age today, plus 30, behave the way I did as 14, unaware of how grief really tears one down, and what people in deep grief and existential life crisis need. I guess we all will experience that one day. He was way too young having to go through that rough loss. I feel so sorry for him. And that I couldn't support him in the right way. 
girl in mind says. At 11am the day of our date after 4 months of exclusive dating text I'm so excited to see you this evening. I'm loving our time together at 6pm this girl at work has said she is interested in me and I've wanted to be with her so I can't see you again sorry I'll let you on I'm okay in my 30s this is how I experienced the first ever time someone breaking up with me. Victorious 97 says. My first breakup was the funniest and strangest one actually. We work in Durgad and lovers we held hands once, and he gifted me a stolen necklace from his mum, and then got together in 6th grade, different schools though, for real, real, we were 12 over 13. We texted a lot, and met up somewhat regularly, but he broke up with me out of the blue. Later on we met again, we were 18 plus, and he asked, if he ever told me, why he broke up back then. And I said no. His cell phone bill got too high and his mum was angry with him for it, and I kept texting him, BC I had a flat rate for it, like 300 sms per month for free, so yeah, that was the reason, him not having the same phone contract slash flat rate as me. Lazicity4922 says. He told me he couldn't date me, because I didn't appreciate my parents enough. I have a strange relationship with my parents, for a good reason. But his parents abandoned him as a child, so me not appreciating that they were in my life was an issue for him. See Hamster 2020 says. Because I put spray and color in my hair for Halloween. That relationship wasn't going anywhere anyway. R0H69 says. Cuz they lied about having cancer, and he said he was going to die tomorrow. No jokes. Sure Economic 7884 says. She told me that she loved a man with length and girth, and when she seen it, she said it was too juthy, and I was going to tear her up. She attempted and started screaming, like I was killing her. LOL. Disavowed Rogue says. She said I wasn't thriving. And Dad in one says. Cause her drug addict dad told her I cheated on her with some low thought that was flirting with me. Banana Republic Zero says. He said that he can't imagine us getting married, and that he doesn't like that we do some things couples do, but not all things that couples do. We had been dating for two weeks. Bad old 5372 says. She wanted to explore other options. Familiar Kiwi5114 says. He accused me of saying something I didn't say. We were sitting and having dinner, then 5 minutes later, he started an argument over words that never came out of my mouth. It was such a strange situation. Krasichikenladi1986 says. Am I'm a Pisces. Also him wanted to go screw the new 18 yo cashier at his job, who gave him her phone number just like he screws all the new teenage cashiers. We were in our mid 30s BTW. He tried talking to me, after she dipped out on him lol. Bohemi Rex says. I didn't envision myself with a housewife. Lucky Beautiful 8901 says. Uh, don't get glasses, they're so unattractive, get contacts instead me, I don't want to wear contacts also me, gets glasses her, who also her, breaks up with me. r slash adulting. Basic meat 5165 says. Burned out. Im turning 52. I don't think him capable of working anymore. I have no drive, no desire, no inspiration. I'm not lazy, I have two kids. I just want to hang with them all day. I don't want to see vice wealthy people anymore, my job. It pays well, but they disrespect me constantly and are generally not great people. I don't know how people work into their 60s etc. I'm so burned out. Face content says. Maybe it's time for a job or career change. I don't think it's an age thing. It's an environment thing. Naive employer 933 says. This must be an age thing. I'm 49 and feel the same way day in and day out. 
I'm trying to cope with it by having something to look forward to every couple months. Long Bottom Leaf Blower says. I'm 29 and completely burned out by terrible managers and awful coworkers. If I could never work again I wouldn't. Known Vermicelli 706 says. You could have a tawdry affair, get caught, then get divorced, and lose all their stuff. That'll perk you right up. Manamopo says. This is why a lot of us live YA below our means, and save so we can retire a sap. I can't and won't work until I'm 67. Chad Abraxas says. It sounds perfectly reasonable to just want to hang with your kids all day. That's what life should be about. Sounds like it's time for a career change. You might not get to hang with your kids all day, but hopefully you'll find a work environment where you are respected and treated like a valued human being. An author Ryadeida says. Same here, just can't be asked with this shot anymore, kids too. Nearly 50. I worked from home from their birth until 12 then split from X, had to go back into what is an even shitter working environment. Bring it home with them, setting my own schedule, nobody breathing down my back, the constant feeling of being monitored, targets I think it all started for me, when I went traveling for a year 20th years ago, and had to come back and work. It sucked. Big Profession 6757 says. You chose to have kids, or stepdad kids, late in life, and chose a wife who doesn't want to work. This puts you in the position of the host organism, and they parasite off of you. You must continue working or all of you will fail. This was all your choice. Nobody forced you. It was the lifestyle and type of wife that you wanted. Nobody to be upset at except yourself. Quit your job and search for another job with less jerks, but continue to work you must. Or, perhaps liquidate and with the equity in your house, move to another cheaper location, or state where you can buy the house outright with some dollar sign still left over. That'll get you closer to retirement. Manamopo says. This is why a lot of us live YA below our means, and save so we can retire a sap. I can't and won't work until I'm 67. Close Excellent says. Time to recharge, and evaluate you life, you need boundaries with those people as they are not showing you respect. Sgtrangwe says. So quit. Question mark? Normal Basis 291 says. Not many people enjoy working, and I think just about all of us would prefer time at home to work. Unless you're able to retire now, you'll have to keep working. I agree with others that maybe finding a new job will help. Perhaps something part-time, if you can afford the pay cut? Educational Fund 7441 says. R slash Coast Fire. I see Patience 2930 says. I hate to go the other way, but I'm turning 52 in a couple of days, and I'm feeling really good about life in general. I married a great girl 25 years ago. We chose not to have kids for our own personal reasons, and are happy about that decision. We enjoy our career choices, and while we of course feel burned out once in a while, it passes when we sit and reflect on where we are and what we've achieved. I certainly understand how people in my age group, and especially millennials and Gen Zs are feeling pinched and nervous about life going forward. Working around people who are constantly disrespectful is something that will grind down anyone. I made a career change at 35, with the full support of my wife, even though we had a mortgage, car payments, line of credit, etc. We had about $2000 in the bank in total, but decided it was worth it to avoid me having a meltdown. As far as working into your 60s, you either have to enjoy what you do, or have no choice, but to do it. I wish you all the best moving forward. IIIAA 2022 says. How is your financial situation? That's what it all comes down to. R slash adulting. DSG 1695 says. Do any other women in their late 20s relate to me? Or am I really flawed? 
29 f and sometimes I wonder if I have a personality defect, or maybe my traits aren't as uncommon as I think they are. 1. I have very bad anxiety and second guess everything slash always expect the worst. My anxiety is pretty general, but the types I relate to most are social and health anxiety. I've tried to get help from a psychological perspective, but handle it better on my own now. 2. I'm very quick to end contact with people when I feel disrespected over time. I'm under the impression that I have an avoidant attachment style based off all those online tests I've taken, and while not an excuse, I notice in one to end contact with someone versus try to work through it slash confront them does depend on the person. 3. With the social anxiety and being borderline antisocial, I'm shy, but feel like I'd rather stay to myself vs try to form relationships with people. Aside from friends, I'm always perpetually single too. The last time I saw someone was in my early 20s, and after that experience, I'm kind of indifferent about guys. I feel this pressure to date because everyone else is coupled up, but I don't want kids slash question if. I want a relationship along with the fact that I don't really have much of a sex drive slash intimacy can make me uncomfortable. I install and uninstall dating apps, I don't msg or send likes every day, but feel at ease when I get the attention. When I don't, I uninstall, usually and try again later. I do question my looks as I don't really ever get attention in person, but those guys on the apps are sometimes the type it go for, I just would only take it seriously if they noticed me in person. 4. I have a hard time in the workplace. I had a job for about 2 years that I hated, but also hated being unemployed, as I got fired for doing something very stupid and own up to it. Longest job I had, was for a little over 2 years and now new at a similar kind of job, I take correction very personally and literally am just waiting for the ball, to drop slash that urge to just walk out every day. Some days are better or worse than others, but it consumes me. These other trays that eat away at me and just want to see if anyone relates. Wava Drexler says. 27 meters and I can relate to every single one of these. Excellent Client 897 says. Might be the tism. Shows up differently in women, but lots of what you're describing. Source, I'm female and have the tism. Sharp Photographer 8092 says. Girl are you my long lost twin? 27F here, and omg this is me. I've got 6 says. 33 meters. But wow. A lot of similarities. Crazy how a lot of PPL feel similar, but yet we feel like we are alone in the battle. As if we are the only one afflicted by this disease. Also struggle with being social. I feel you about expecting the worst of things so, if indeed it does happen that way, I'm not caught off guard. About the cutting contact, I'm similar as well. I don't like fighting. I like my peace. And I won't say flawed, but we either by our decisions in life, or by what we went through as kids, things that were out of our hands, have made us feel like this. So I feel you. But you're not alone. We are all struggling. We just gotta be there to push one another. C0GN says. This might sound super boring, but here's what helped me. 6, 8 hours of sleep in a dark room, every day no exceptions 30, 60 minutes of your favorite exercise every day get together with other humans, to discuss slash participate in a common interest at least once a week daily stretching, and meditation proper balanced whole foods diet, avoid anything packaged, if you are just doing the bare minimum to survive. Your body is in survival mode constantly which looks like anxiety. Miss Merid says. This is also very much me. You are not alone, and I'm in my early 20s trying to find some stability. Puzzle Hated Coat 153 says. Yes. I'm in therapy, though and everything has gotten better. I didn't really get any diagnosis, just insecurities, trauma from my childhood. Violet Pooh says. Are you me? You wrote out everything I feel. 
Doc Angel says. I'm 28F. And I'm literally the same. All points are just so me. And you've literally concisely written all the shit I'm going through right now. I've literally cut off people. I feel the pressure. Because people are getting married. Work is so up and down. I can't concentrate. Prudent Criticism 851 says. I'm turning 29 next month. And I relate to all of these things. Contraversovany says. 29F. I relate to 1 and 2 a lot. Especially 2, but not 3 or 4. I think a reason why I find work pretty easy to navigate is because I have a profession that really suits me and that I really enjoy. It's also not the most sociable job in the world. I don't have to interact with the public or anything. So it really suits me. So I think finding a profession that you genuinely enjoy and that generally fits in with your quirks helps. Much easier said than done though, I got very lucky that I figured that out pretty early. Also the company Europe makes a huge difference too. Some are really accommodating of personality quirks. Many are not. I don't really know why I struggle having friendships, but am fine with romantic relationships. I think I relate to number 2 a lot, because I've been abused in friendships in a way I haven't with romantic relationships, and I seem to attract friends with bad intentions for some reason. But romantic relationships feel easier, because a lot of men like me, and I have a higher sex drive so it maybe makes me feel more comfortable getting into a romantic thing. Puzzle who aided pace 994 says. I'm just like you. 24F. I have had, diagnosed recently and it's made life really hard for me. Leather reference 24 says. I'm 28F, and relate to every single thing you said. You're not alone. Cookies and Cream 02 says. Hey 26 female, here in TBH you're just going through the norm. I wish I had an avoidant attachment, because I believe in the opposite, I'm the anxious attachment style and I freaking hate it, omg I can relate with number 4 so much, I hate being unemployed, and I'm currently employed, but I hate my job, and have been trying to find another job for a year now but no luck, I feel so stuck, and can't even do anything to change. My situation since I don't wanna be unemployed, and would rather leave my current job for a new role. RGY32F says. Doc told me that in this way due to I guess not having my needs met as a small child emotionally, now I'm independent, can't keep relationships for very long, anxious about everything and uncertain, I have a I'll figure it out myself mentality. Despite this I've done well for myself ironically enough I'm in a relationship, but it has been rocky due to me wanting to leave every time something seems off, but she keeps me around, and helps me work through my odd mind. So doing life is alright I guess for now. I talk to my dog a lot she's a strong listener. Cboss8371 says. Strongly relates to the first three. Jade4827 says. I think this is just how a lot of people feel. Life is hard and it kind of sucks, and nobody warns you. I just try to be more the person I want to be, when I have the energy. Frank Ansemi says. I continually remind myself, that I make the best decision with the information at the time. It's the best we can do. Disrespected. Wonder if when you grew up, you have difficult parents? The whole install slash uninstall, ups and downs for me was at least bipolar disorder. Maledicma made 0317 says. 28F and yes I relate to all of your anxieties. You're not alone. Some days are garbage and mentally draining, but other days I feel at peace. My anxiety and depression are still there, but I don't let them consume me anymore. It took a lot of work, reflection and a good therapist to help me get there. For your hash 3, I'd suggest explore more with your sexual identity. It's totally normal to not want to be in a relationship or be indifferent about it. My best friend is asexual. She's contemplated her life choices on probably never going to be in a relationship or kids in the future. 
Keep in mind that like all sexualities, asexuality is a spectrum. It's not all or nothing on physical or romantic feelings. Also you don't have to label your sexuality anything at all. Just a thought. r slash adulting alone safe 499 says what was the most disturbing movie slash tv show you ever watched and why fanta 589 says the blair witch project consider i watched my brother's vhs copy of a copy of a copy i watched it alone while my parents were out for the night and i thought it was real found footage Pankista says. Human centipede has got to be up there, doesn't really need an explanation. Spreadhead1013 says. Requiem for a dream after I watched it years ago, after my husband warned me not to, I was depressed for like two days. It is heartbreaking. Bigdraw9661 says. Martyrs. Maybe not the most disturbing but definitely stuck. No Steps Next 76 says. A Spanish film called The Skin I Live In. Discarded Tree says. A Serbian film. I watch a lot of horror and disturbing movies, but this one is one of the very few that even got to me. Rather not go into details on why it's bad, but it's really bad. Mariah Shinobu says. Blair Witch Project I went to the opening in Boston before the rest of the world saw it. Before the movie started, the two girls in front of me asked me what it was about. I told them all I knew was that the movie was about found footage or something, but that's all I know. No clue if it was real or not. It was a very creepy movie, especially if you never heard of the movie before or knew about any of the details. It certainly felt like found footage, especially with the nameless actors doing a very good job at playing real life people. And when that ending came, I'll never forget, the two girls in front of me jumped out of their seat and shrieked. They made it even more scarier for me. After the movie, I told all my friends to go see it, but they all later told me they were disappointed with it. Because by then, the word spread so fast about plot details which completely killed the appeal of the movie. And the actors were all over the news, giving interviews and trying to play celebrity, which eliminated all the wonderment over whether it was found footage or not. Yes, Blair Witch Project is a pretty lousy movie in retrospect, but if you were me opening night, never heard of this film, no one spoiled any plot details, didn't recognize any of the actors, and really started to believe it was found footage, Blair Witch Project was a pretty scary movie to see. Fun times. I miss those days. At Swiss 89 says. Antichrist, it was a lot. Grand Tour 20 to 23 says. Dama. Phonex Abanero says. Mother. Specifically the baby scene. Karma 666 says. Srepsky film I don't even want to talk about it. Emperor Ajani says. The news. Some days I wonder about the existence of damn near everything when I watch it. The most disturbing show there is. Xaba says. I got legit creeped out by the three body problem recently. Those countdowns feel so invasive. Gaskus86 says. Haven't actually watched the whole thing, but I've seen enough clips to say. The house that Jack built it's about a man's evolution into becoming a serial killer. There is a scene where he takes a mother and her two young kids hunting that particularly got to me. Kindness Not Cruelty says. I don't remember the name of it, but my family had a folder of totally legitimately acquired films, so I used to watch them on the PC when I was like 10. I clicked on this random one out of curiosity, and it turned out to be a Japanese horror film that started with this woman putting her hand into still running blender. After that, I developed a habit of researching ahead every film in that folder prior to clicking on them, because that image is permanently burned into my mind. As a result, I don't use the blender without religiously unplugging it immediately after using it. Oh, and the misses. 
Bathory scene out of Hostel 2. I always have to pause that. Okay, Breadfruit2897 says. Squid Game. Ash Canfenum says. A Serbian film. Don't watch it. Akanthosifal Anno7788 says. 2014 Predestination, put my mind in a loophole. Fancy Poem 6813 says. Midnight Mass. Spazic 77 says. A Handmaid's Tale. It's a show that makes you hate watch it. Rasp Barayok 54 says. Come and see. Latter Night Crutcher says. Movies that have, frick, ed me up by being disturbing, martyrs, 2008, inside slash lintra hereditary common thing with these three is the emotional suffering they portray, not so much the horror aspect. Purple Haze 11 says. Sword fights happen. A third degree 3593 says. A Serbian film. Gooch Blender says. Threads was pretty jarring. No over the top shock value or drama. Just unbelievably bleak. I wasn't right for a few days after that one. Hector Chasmud says. Funny games and clockwork orange. Bad boy Bobby 2. Obviously human centipede. They all have levels of depravity that I wouldn't have even thought of, and the first two have the added dressed and horror of knowing those things could happen to me. Actually Wolf Creek has that same vile realness that it could happen to me, and watching people get raped just breaks you. If you're a normal person. Amphibian Thick 2852 says. Dejeral, guy shat out some form of a fetus. Alas Riz says. Come and see, because it's a horrible and real depiction of WW2 from the civilian puff. All quiet on the western front, is also incredibly sad and disturbing, but either come, and see is more or. r slash adulting. Worth the weight 6016 says. People who work for the ultra rich, what have you witnessed? Spiral Squirrel says. Rampant drug use and a hostile disregard for the poor. Smackalel says. Ironically that also describes the ultra poor. Wolf Cloaks Owl says. We all work for the ultra rich, if you trace it far enough. Lockyer Lakira says. My friend does landscaping for a lady who owns 12 massive houses on Hawaii and all of them are empty. Like, salt water infinity pool, 2 story, 4 bathrooms, 9 bedrooms. There is a housing crisis, meanwhile this lady just wants her houses empty, idky. She doesn't try to rent them, or even consider it. I have asked him to let me squat one. He said maybe. AC Shell says. We were at a river and this rich guy wanted to rent a canoe. He couldn't, so he left and bought one. Later, he left it behind. He gave no, frick s. Quick delay 4427 says. I worked for a multimillionaire, owned an import business and several rental properties. I went to their residence a large estate. When I walked in I was shocked to find it completely outdated with absolutely no furniture. Only the kitchen and bedrooms had furniture in an 8k SQFT home, and drove a cheap Toyota. What's the point of having money, if you do nothing with it? Has more than enough to retire on already. She was a greedy narcissistic nut job though, the rated employees, put her hands on your shoulder to make you uncomfortable, her own husband left the country for months at a time, just to get away from her. Totally toxic manipulative person, hope suffers a long death honestly. Thomas Afing says. The company, Bigid Firm, owners would look down on and criticize employees who took legally granted parental leave, arguing that the country does not need more children referring to poor children, and that men taking leave was pointless, because there is nothing they can do to help their wives after labor. This attitude highlighted the owner's own detachment from domestic responsibilities, despite each having four or more children with the help of servants and nannies. Old Raj says. 
I work for a family that's almost billionaires. Sorry normal people. They own a few houses in extravagant places, but they're friendly ordinary people. Even their only child 20 female is nice. Connectarm9448 says. Eat the rich. Thick app just says. The owner wanted to buy Alienware computers because they had good graphics to run his interior light show. Objective Ostrich 776 says. Here is the one thing that truly bothers me. 10,000 square foot homes with a 8 by 10 foot room for the maid to live in that has lower grade tile, hot plate, cheap bathroom etc. I feel bad for these live in maids. Bless them. Bloody champion says. A lot of cucking and wife swapping. UN 404 error says. A lady going into his office to give him IVE every day to fix the hangover and get back to work. It isn't expensive but still funny. Gothic Lug says. This was high school but not work, the my parents have so much money they are not going to flinch over a large bill or even consider it kid was on the robotics team. Not even a big deal, let the kid be nerdy, most people didn't question why he'd be on the team. It wasn't until the family casually sent him a 10 to 15 person robotics team and multiple parents to a battle bot competition without thinking about asking anyone else to whip out a credit card that I was stunned. Tonight Adventurous 76 says. Everyone works for someone, I think. Usually everyone has someone above them, including those with small businesses or entrepreneurs, in some way or other. I worked when I was young as a home manager for people that I believe were pretty wealthy from the looks of it. They became a second family, and it was a great experience. A Afrojones66 says. Ran armed security for multi-millionaires. Saw multiple DUIs adultery, abuse, and received actual death threats. It was great. Nathan Brazil 2 says. If you were a billionaire, you would have enough money to constantly keep a wad of $100 bills on you. You could hand them out all day long, say 20 bills a day, or $2,000. So that would be approximate $730,000 or three quarters of a million dollars a year. It would not dent their wealth. No billionaire does anything like this, or we would have heard about it. Elon Musk is rich enough to give out $1,000 bills to everyone all day long, and not affect his wealth. Miss Duxon says. I worked for this couple who owned a billion dollar company. Mostly they lived pretty frugally aside from their huge house. They would also go on trips to places like France, China, etc. Mostly for business, but would fit in pleasure. The biggest thing I noticed was they had no problem dropping thousands on whatever they felt like. Dinner, a last minute ticket, a minor convenience. But otherwise we're super frugal with groceries and clothes and such. Daydream2736 says. My friend works for one of the most famous stars in Hollywood. The philosophy of everything has a price is true. They've witnessed them going into a store and straight buying a window display statue, just because they liked it. Another story was, if they had an off day, they would fire you on the spot, so most people avoided working with them, if they were in a bad mood. Objective Ostrich 776 says. Alert of suck ups. Max Bourne says. A family member of mine is a private pilot who mostly flies stupidly rich people and often doesn't get tipped anything. I don't know anything about private flight tipping culture, but like I feel, like he deserves something. R slash adulting. No cherry 6129 says. Life is fucking hard man. Anything and everything can just come at you at once. Everything is hard, even doing nothing is hard. Existing is hard. Prior Helpful says. I get it dude I've been getting my shit kicked in, since I moved out of my mom's at 17, but, frick, it we ball. KSMHD says. I totally get you, I thought I was alone in this. Low Medical says. 
I think that's true for all animals. Even the deer or rabbits you see around, nibbling on an abundant food source, they live their lives in a state of constant anxiety over predators, not to mention discomfort from cold, parasites, etc. That's what I tell myself, when things get hard, we are animals, and the expectation that life be anything but hard is actually abnormal. Except for domestic dogs and cats, their lives aren't hard at all. I like this poem by D.H. Lawrence, I never saw a wild thing sorry for itself. A small bird will drop frozen dead from a bough without ever having felt sorry for itself. Not accusing you of self-pity, I just like how that poem relates to the idea that existing is difficult for all things. Some gooey from Argentina says. Yes. Deep Trench 34 says. Life is whatever you believe it's going to be. It doesn't have to be so hard. We are just indoctrinated into the idea that it is. You can live a great life with very little effort and struggle required. It may mean making due with less, though. Phil Major says. Well, 8 billion people are living difficult lives, and 109 billion are estimated to have done so beforehand. You're not alone in finding life difficult, but also many billions of other people have found happiness in light of their difficult lives. Chin up. Practice positive self-talk, and stop wallowing, when you find yourself in the pits. It doesn't do you any good. Statista Shian Top 8813 says. Yeah it can be tough it can also be amazing. Sprinkless Revenge says. Indeed it is, you'll never get out alive. Zoinked Pirate says. Feel this to an extreme, as a 19y slash oh I work at ups making 23 slash hours for barely 25 hr slash week, trying to start learning blue collar work coming from a single parent family, I'm 11k in debt trying to make early payments, auto, credit and personal loan, my health insurance with my parent, has expired so now I, have to figure out how to get insurance through work, currently struggling to get a second job, can't make a decision on if I want to go to school. I'm honestly just at the point where I feel like I should just join the military or reserves to at least try to solve some of my problems currently, but I also have doubts. I really want to be able to live on my own without having to do military. It's hard because high school doesn't teach about most of these things and even your financial classes don't. It sucks man but hey, just going day by day currently just trying to be grateful that I even get to be alive, have a job, have a Cadillac, wanting to learn how to be a man, knowing what I want as a career and just making sure my mom is all good. Cream P like a 123 says. Frick even harder. A power old investor says. No it isn't. We eat, poop, and wait around to die someday. Lotto 7 says. You got this. You're a warrior and resilient as hell. One day, you will look back at this time of your life with great pride for overcoming and slaying the demons of doubt and depression. Lucky Electric says. I remember being a young adult with no money in Wisconsin. Waiting like an hour for the bus in the freezing conditions. And then the bus came and it drove right by me without stopping, even though I was at the stop. I was just standing there dumbstruck like how is this possible? Or giving birth, puking and sweating for more than 24 hours without sleep, and then I couldn't push my son out after 4 hours of trying. And by the way giving birth the skin between your vagina and anus will often rip. That's natural. Just like is this really what the universe expects of me? My Nami Skittles says. Yup. D0 Torsklachta says. Would 1 million dollars make it all better? Mobile Boss 8566 says. Yep wear a helmet. Dra 380 says. Well I'm still waiting for another asteroid. I'm sure it will make life easy for the whole planet. Quantum Leap P5 says. That's a better reality of life. Everything is hard. Ladisaki I says. Yes it is. Donatracer says. 
One either has an internal or external locus of control. Scorpiotics says. In the immortal words of Richard Nixon as portrayed by Anthony Hopkins, it's the struggle that defines you. Loki 369 says. Stay strong king. Good things happen to good people eventually. Len 1526 says. The opening line of the book The Road Less Traveled by Scott Peck is life is difficult the author, a psychiatrist, then spends the rest of the chapter focusing on how hard it is to accept and recognize that fact. But that once you do, it generally allows you to lead a more productive life. Be Comprehensive 5234 says. I agree. Nurse Morgan 204 says. Existence is suffering. I feel you though. Hang in there. Candidate 1535 says. Motivating is hard, but I hope you still keep going, no matter how hard life is. Case 1 says. Yep, from the very first fish turn amphibian struggling for breath we all have to struggle though it in some way. For the few it's easier and the problem of a first world, but for the many it can be misery. The test in life is being dignified through it, trying not to let it turn you evil, and trying to make the best of things, because the alternative makes you reek of vitriol. Balsambut says. We move. Gerald 101 says. Where ignorance is bliss, tis folly to be wise Thomas Gray though not yet backed with scientific research. Higher intelligence could be correlated with feelings of helplessness due to understandings of situations. Sorry you might be one of the smart ones. Quiet back 8744 says. Evolution is brutal and constantly tests your fitness. But peak frustration is also when things start turning around for the better. You just need to keep fighting for yourself. Joker Forensics says. Balance. Collect bills during the week. Spend an hour on the weekend or one night during the week to pay. Schedule time and make priorities. Set aside some hours during the week to get things done. Make progress during those hours, then push out for another week. Once you get too many things, everyone wants you to take care of their problems immediately. Just say no. Make sure before anything else. Rent and utilities are covered. Next make sure transportation is working. Most other things can wait. HE Penipaka 71 says. Sure is. Everything that's worthwhile is difficult though. R slash adulting. Pure Zucchini Rage says. For those of you who work low wage slash dead end jobs, do you ever feel like you're below other people because they have more exciting slash higher paying job? Do you think a lot of people judge you because you're not at their LVL of success? Voyager 316 says. Of course. This is called class warfare and it's been happening since the dawn of time. It sucks, but it is what it is. I have an opinion on that says. I've heard higher. 70k plus, and low, 2.13 slash hours plus TIPS. Paint jobs. Here's what I learned about myself, I'm not my job. I am, name, and I happen to do this or that for work. What I do for work is not who I am. I feel less than other people for plenty of reasons, but my job, higher paying or lower, is not one of them. We are all just out here trying to survive the best we can. Paleontologist Ock 7794 says. Yeah, I'm sure there are people that are judging me. There's no shortage of people who like looking down on those lower on the pecking order. Generally, I try to remind myself that I have an easier job than people who are paid more than me. That seems like a fair trade for me. Promotions usually involved more work. I'm sure that's not universally true, but it's been more or less true in my life. Bird63 says. Whether you arrive in a Ferrari, or you arrive on roller skates, you both arrive in the same spot. I've never worried about other people, I've only worried about myself and my spouse. 
as long we are together, and happy with each other, that's all that matters to us. We've been together over 40 years now. BlackBeyed666 says. I do work on a job, that could be classified as such, after my original career didn't pan out. This affected me socially as well, since my college friends ghosted me, or treat me in a condescending way, when I meet with them. Sabanteo says. It's way way I, I better to have a dead end slash low wage job than no job at all. If you feel low status, because of your job, having none at all is the lowest status. And whatever you do, never quit your shitty job. Hang in there. This is where it gets important, and something everybody should be told, when you have a job, it's a 1000% easier to get a new job. Sticking with your shitty job will look impressive to your next and hopefully right employer. Staying at home looking for the right job to come along. I can promise you, that your application won't even be considered. So, however hopeless things seem, buckle down and start at the bottom. Work your way up. It works. And when you finally make it, you can look back at your toil with pride. Kittista says. I did but now I stop caring. I do have family members pressuring me to go for a higher paying job but I'm content. I have to budget more wisely, but I seem to have a less stressful life and I have more free time to do the things I want. My priorities are outside of work. Dog Blue 3 says. I live in a wealthy area and there are so many people here who will only talk to you if they deem you worthy, i.e. you have a good job or lot of money slash resources. I think they believe it's just networking. OK Commission 9026 says. When I worked a low wage, I was proud that I could cover my bills and buy a few groceries. Now that I make a living wage. A friend is staying in my extra room and is embarrassed he works at a gas station. I told him his job is super important, and I truly believe that. If he wasn't there, the doctors couldn't gas up in the morning, the construction workers couldn't buy their water for the day, the truckers couldn't get coffee to stay awake. We're all a team keeping each other afloat. I don't understand looking down on cashiers, servers, etc. We need all of us. Jack Fair says. No I don't feel like I'm below anyone. Buga Blantwo says. Not really. In the next 20 years, virtually every white collar job will be done by technology. Not to mention virtually all guru and consulting jobs will disappear when the economy take a big downturn. There's going to be a lot of white collar and tech workers out there who won't know what hit them in the near future. But those who understand how things work, and how to fix things, and understand supply chains and movement, and are willing to use their muscle, will always have work. It may not be glamorous, or have a prestigious title, but it will keep food on the table and the lights on while others are losing their jobs. Kaladoska Pino 1456 says. Used to I suppose, most of the time I'm grateful, that I'm still able to still do good work and just get by. It's really weird, depends how you measure success. I used to have friends who had higher paying jobs and they did rub it in my face on a few occasions, when going out on town, just to pick up a bird or two, etc. However they were usually the friends who come to me, and ask for some money as they didn't have enough to cover the rent, and subsequently not having the funds to pay me back. Where are they now, I don't know, they stopped contacting me, when I had nothing to spare, People are people, not complicated but probably intricate to what they believe in. I can only help where I can. I'm successful in managing myself, and I'm happy, for now, despite the imposter syndrome. Protection Content 977 says. Comparison is the thief of joy. Tallywicker 73 says. Frick other people. Yes. People will judge you for any reason, if you're not rich and happily married, and have kids and a big house and... Frick that. Comparison is the thief of joy. I know it's hard, but don't worry about what other people are doing, what other people think. Are you happy? Are you content? 
are you on a path where you'll still be happy in 10 years? That said, low wage jobs generally suck, and higher wage jobs are generally pretty cushy. Look at the manager of your department, you could do all that. I know it's cliche, but yeah, show up every day, work at least pretty hard, make it known that you want to advance to management. Look for ways to improve the stuff you work on. If you show any ambition at all, you'll be ahead of most of your coworkers. Spencer and Mark says. I used to care so much when I was in 20s. I feel demotivated etc. Now I'm 32, I truly don't care what people say about me. It's my life and my own journey. As long as I can support my own life, I'll be just fine. I don't plan to get married and have kids. So less responsibilities and I can plan my life easily. Laliving90 says. Yes I work at an airport, everyone from the front desk, airline managers, flight attendants, pilots also took the bus. Maybe it was just me, but I feel they avoided sitting next to lowly worker like me. TBF some of the ramp agents were idiots though. Wellacadic says. We are all doing a job. Unless you're a billionaire, and maybe even then, you're likely accountable to someone. I would not let yourself feel you are below people, even if people treat you that way. Fact is, you aren't. And even if you were, you don't deserve to be treated that way, and guess what best part I out can get out. You can do anything you want in this life. Go for it. That's all for this video thank you for watching please subscribe.